record button and then we will uh, get going. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Hey, everyone. Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd. Hope you are doing well. Today we are doing an exclusive interview and conversation with one of the most viral hip hop sensations on the internet right now. Uh, that would be, you know, Miles. He is known for numerous, hilarious and outlandish hits uh, that have been just spreading like wildfire across TikTok, across SoundCloud, across YouTube, across a number of different platforms. We're going to talk about his style, his biggest hits so far and anything else that comes up in this conversation. Uh, dude, thank you for coming on and making the time. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, no problem. Um, so, uh, I, I mean, you know, wh wh where do I start? I mean, I guess I will say that um, I've been hearing your tracks like for weeks and for months, honestly, but I've been hearing them sort of like used in other videos and used in like, you know, other like viral clips and stuff like that. I didn't necessarily see it like attributed to you directly until like recently I was getting some comments being like, hey, man, you have to check out, you know, Miles and so on and so forth. And then I was, you know, once I actually did that, I saw that, oh, this is the guy who was like making these six or seven tracks I've been hearing like over and over and over and over for like weeks and weeks and weeks, um, you know, sort, sort of give us an idea because I know you've been making music for a long time and under the, you know, Miles name, um, you know, it's, it's been more or less since about like 2020 uh, in, in that realm, like, you know, give us a bit of um, a story or sort of like, a, a, you know, explanation as to how this you know, sort of like really intense viral snowball effect for a lot of your songs that we're seeing right now. When did that start to pick up? And, you know, um, uh, you know, what, what's what's like sort of the tipping point that's brought it to where it is now? Uh, OK, so technically, like a year ago, I made these two songs called Road to Riches and Money in the Bag. Right. So a year ago, those songs kind of went up. And, like, it went up on, like, some crazy stuff back then. But, like, quick as those songs went up, it kind of, like, fell down just as it went up. Because I was doing, like, sound effects with my songs. Right. And, and, and do you, so, <laughs> you go ahead. <laughs> is, 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 is that sort of the X factor, you think, with, you know, those tracks? Like, um, you know, Money in the Bag, for example. What kind of bag was that that you were using on the track? To... So, that, that actually was, a like, so I went to the store. That's a liquor store bag, all right? So, I went to the store. <laughs> And I had got this bag from the liquor store. And I remember we went to the studio right after it. And my homies was like, we got to make some fire. And I was sitting there and I was like, I don't know what we can make. We was all trash. I ain't going to lie. We was in there. We trash. We suck. So with that being said, I'm fumbling the bag as we trying to figure out what to do. And my homie Mar had just made that beat. And I remember he played it. And I'm crumbling in the bag. And I'm just doing this. And I'm like, man, it's, it's kind of hard, man. Like. So I just kind of put it on the beat from there, man. That we just, you know, made money in the bag. You, you're talking about going to the studio. I mean, me and anybody else who's heard your stuff, like we're, we're hearing the super high level of production value that's going into every single thing that you do. Like, it, like tell us the the you know Miles studio setup and experience. Are you like working off a twenty thousand dollar mixing board? Are you working with oh, like no, the no. biggest DAWs and sort of like editing programs? Do you have every sort of like, you know, beat maker and sampler known to man, you know, three, four thousand dollar synthesizers? Like what kind of equipment is going into this stuff? Uh, fifteen dollar mic and a hundred dollar computer. That was what I started with. No way! And Stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Literally, that's I no. I just upgraded probably like three months ago. Okay, okay. Well, what? what and then what was... I, I still went cheap. It's like sixty bucks now. You know, I upgraded sixty, but I used to go to the real studio. But the engineer said he was tired of me playing in the studio, so he just you know told me not to come back. Are are, are there people who you've dealt with? in your travels like that, who just, when, when they're seeing you doing what you're doing, they're seeing you recording, they're hearing it, they're just not getting it. And they're sort of, well, this guy's just a clown. I'm not going to take him seriously. There's no point in this. Yeah. Yeah. I think everybody does it. Mm. It's like nowadays I just notice when people see numbers, that's kind of when they go along with it. Right. But like beforehand, oh yeah, no, I got kicked out everywhere. Man. I couldn't even record in the studio. My mom, I couldn't even record in the house because I used to record in like uh, the room, in my bedroom. I say I'm a successful bedroom rapper sometimes. It's like a joke, but I was recording in there and I remember she just tired of me recording music in the room. So I had to find somewhere else to go. So so you, you were kicked out of your own house for, for recording? 
Yeah, sadly, yes. Oh, okay. So, so you know, wh- where are you able to safely record now, where it's just kind of okay, like what you know, it's, it, without, without obviously you know telling us too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, uh, the, the basement. Okay, the basement. Got yeah. it. And and you know, the acoustics are good in there. Is it, are you just able to record in there? Is there anything else about that spot that kind of makes it just like you know good as far as like a vibe for you to do what you need to do? I mean, the ceiling kind of missing. That's kind of like about it. Okay. Does that add to the rawness, would you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's, you know, that adds to why I'll be yelling on the tracks and then like kind of, you know, just never touch the vocals. I leave everything exactly how I recorded it and just drop it. You know, some people are saying with tracks like Indiana Jones, for example, that you have the best vibrato in the rap game. Uh, nobody else has like that, like that, that you have, is that, is that all 100% natural? Is that digitally enhanced in any way? Is no, that that's natural? That's yeah, totally natural. natural. Have, has, yeah. has that something your, is that something your voice has always been able to do? Did uh, you need to, did you need an yeah, experiment yeah. So to, kid, to find that? Yeah. Yeah. So as a kid, I actually used to do like a little voice acting and stuff. So okay. I used to know how to sound like a uh, Daffy Duck, uh, you got Bugs Bunny. And I used to know how to sound like Taz from, you know, the Looney Tunes. And I remember just from doing that, I guess, you know, it just kind of just picked up on the way. Is 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 that where some of the like comes from when you're sort of like saying, hey, this sounds like this? And then oh, no, no, no. That like, comes from messing up on the track. You know, I used to be messing up and then I'll be like, just leave that in there. You know what I'm saying? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I I guess like we we currently live in an age where it seems like everybody's pressured to overproduce everything and process everything down so that it doesn't sound like there's a single mistake in any of the songs or in any of the music, you know, uh, lyrically flow wise, you're you're just kind of leaving this stuff in there and just saying like, you know, it kind of is what it is. Yep, yep, that's it. And, you know, I mean, do, do you feel like you're going against the grain in that sense? Like, are, are there other rappers or sounds in, in music generally that sort of, you know, have also kind of led you to feel like, well, you know, if there's like some mistakes or if it's a little lo-fi or if it's a little this or that, it, it's not a big deal. That may make it even sound better. Uh, Yeah, but like, I really honestly don't listen to rap. Like, I grew up listening to, like, honestly, rock music. I used to listen to like Panic at the Disco, you know, Hungry Like the Wolf type of music. Okay, okay. So, like, when I started hearing rap, you know, that was probably, like, 2010. And, you know, that's, like, Lil Wayne Drake era. So, I and just always thought their music was perfected, though, honestly. You know, that that's that's interesting. Like, you know, outside of Panic at the Disco, are you, like, generally an emo fan? Are you an Eddie Fallout Boy or sort of, like, um, uh, you know, uh, Paramore? Any other groups sort of in that, uh, in that pocket? Yeah, so my sister, she used to listen to Paramore. I liked, like, two songs by her. Uh-huh. Um, other than that, you know, I listen to like Blink. You got Blink in them. Uh, it's this new band that's out now. They are called. I honestly forgot the name. I like their songs though, and I'll be listening to it on like uh, Spotify. Okay. And then okay. I just started listening to this group called like Group Therapy. They make okay. music. I've seen them on TikTok. I actually I, I reviewed their record earlier this year. That record is great. Okay. It touches down on so many different genres, and they're kind of just like doing everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know. Um, have, have a lot of, uh, you know, you were talking about earlier how there are a lot of people that like, you know, producers and such that don't necessarily take you seriously because, you know, they're seeing what you do and they don't sort of like see the value in it, but they see the numbers later and maybe they turn around on it. Uh, are there any artists or, you know, whoever that's been knocking on your door since that's happened and maybe wanted to like pull a collab or sort of like do a crossover with you or something, have you as a feature on a track? Is that something that you're even interested in? That's not really what I'm interested in, but uh, I had a few that hit me up, but more so they like, they had like follow me for about an hour and then just like unfollow me on some weird stuff. I don't unfollow know. you? Yeah, yeah. I don't know like what's up with that. I got a lot of rappers that actually do it. And then if I like try to do a song or something, they just kind of read the message. They don't even say nothing. Is, is, sorry, is, is there like, you know, are, are are they afraid of being associated with you or, you know, your sound or? I would. I don't know. I wouldn't even know. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. I must say, I thought I thought everything was just you know it's supposed to be for music, you know, fun entertainment. But you know, I guess in a book, it's probably something more serious. I wouldn't know. 
All right. Um, I want to ask specifically about a, a few different songs here. One being Pirates on a Boat. That sort of seems to be, you know, like a fan favorite. That's one that I certainly liked when I was kind of checking out your catalog. Was there a lot of research that went into that track to find about about, you know, to find out about the pirates on the boat, the dinosaurs on the boat, so on and so forth? Like, did you really have to sort of like look into the history of pirates and boats to kind of like conceive what you did on that track? Uh, one second. This this house phone ring. Shut up. Oh, it's huh? fine. Okay. Um, we we know so we know like, you, we know you're busy and in high demand. It's fine. Okay. 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 Yeah. Well, that's actually my grandma's house phone. I'm at my grandma's house right now. You oh, well, look, beer your, in the back. You your know. grandma. We shout need to talk. Grandma. We're yeah. we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna give her a shout out later. Yeah, she at work right now. That's the reason I'm over. Oh, got got it got she's it. She's at home. Yeah, you know the songs. They yeah, it's it's a little more than that. But um. Right. Pirates on the Boat, yeah, yeah. So I made that song right after binge watching One Piece. I watched like 400 episodes, man, in like okay. literally two weeks. And I was like, I, I need to make a song about it. Mm -hmm. And, and that then that was like the, that was kind of the turning point because, you know, I came from the money in the bag stuff. And I was sitting there, I was like, I just got to make a song that I know people going to like. Well, okay. That, that kind of leads me into another question that I wanted to ask. Um, you know, your dropping you know quite a few anime references here and there in a lot of your tracks do you have some favorites that you just like kind of want to let the fans know that uh, are close to your heart that you really enjoy watching or re-watching uh yeah i guess i got one uh i like noragami i okay. like watching that one that was kind of cool okay and it's uh it's one called like no gain no life mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not i'm not as well versed myself are these films or these series these are anime series. Okay, they're series. And and what you know are the are these newer? Are these older? What makes them stand out to you generally? Uh, they kind of old. Mm -hmm. So like, well, no gain, no life. It's really it's like uh, it's kind of like what I'm doing now. Really, it's uh, it's like people with uh, well, you know, the world gonna say no talent. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. And it's like they thrown into a world of like people that's talented at playing games like chess. Mm -hmm. You know, you got checkers and these people that's like super skilled versus them. They look at like they ain't got none. So what they do is they cheat their way through, but they make it look so easy and they never get caught cheating. Mm. And, you, and you're saying like you kind of see in your own way, you're doing that with your own career and your own music. Yeah, you're kind of yeah, like yeah. you're kind of like cheating the system in a way. It's sort of. Yeah. What, what do you what do you feel like your cheat code is like? What are you doing that's kind of um, getting you to where you are? I, 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 guess, I, I guess I guess I guess without giving up. You know, the yeah, key. Yeah, no, 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 I got you. I got you. Really, I just say reverse psychology, honestly, like. Mm. I just took we making it, you know, out the hood and I've been, you know, just using it since like 2019, you know, so. And, and, and through that, you've been able to just achieve this viral success that you're seeing. Uh, yeah. And no, you know, you got to come with like, uh, what do you call it? You got to come with new, uh, new formats and stuff, you know. Do you have any kind of like secret PR team or people sort of like posting? And no, it's just, your, it's just, it's just your fans who are psychotic yeah. for you, who are doing well, all so, that stuff. Yeah, so what happens is I actually, every meme you see in me, I actually started myself. That's why I make sure on my pages, mm. I post it first. What they do is go viral off of mine, and then like people will hear or see it or, and just take it and run with it. So like everything that you see meme-wise for me is created through me. Mm -hmm. And you're just sort of like embracing that side of the meme culture and then it's sort of like feeding back into you. Yeah, yeah. I think every song nowadays, basically, it's like it's memed anyway. So I feel like I might as well just take it to my own hands and do it. That's I mean, that's industrious. What what would you say is like, you know, um, it, explain to me the importance for you to sort of like, at least on some level, stay kind of anonymous with what you do. You know, it's like, is it a part of like a character that you're embodying when you're recording songs and kind of being, you know, miles on the internet, or is there something about what you do that you feel like is maybe kind of embarrassing or is it maybe some, some bit of both? I don't know. <laughs> no, no, I'm not embarrassed, bro. It's just really a character. Cause like as a kid, I always wanted to be an actor mm. and I was trying to do it for like a few years and stuff. I just, you know, kind of got played out of it. I made a video about why I started doing this. Okay. And it was, uh, that's basically kind of, I wanted to see if I could make a character entertain like people and actually be an actor another way. Do you feel like you've kind of explored all the limits of this character that you're doing so far? Are there going to be new things that you're trying out with it as you release more music and kind of go forward? Yeah, it's going to be a lot of new things, man. It's just, you, you know, you don't get a lot of help, you know, at doing stuff like this. So it's going to, it's going to be a challenge, but you know, I'll make it happen.
In in order, do you feel like help is something that you would need in order to sort of bring things to the next level? Do you see yourself building no, up no, a, no, a no. team to, to achieve something bigger than what you're doing right now? Not really. It's just like, you know, the bigger you get at doing these things, people expect like, you know, when you're a rapper, you're supposed to have certain things behind you and stuff at a certain level, which, you know, you really don't need it. But that's just what the world perceives it as. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Are, are there any other sort of like assumptions or perceptions that you feel like people have of you at this point because as, as you were kind of telling me before we hopped on this is your first interview are, are there any other things that you read about yourself on the internet that are just like well that's not true or that's not how i succeeded or that's not how that was made or whatever that maybe you'd like to dispel now to just say like well actually this is this and that is that um not really i don't really see too much about me on there besides like just a whole bunch of troll comments mm. people trying to troll you upset you it's weird because it's like some people try to go along with when I troll and then some people try to do it, but they trolls be 10 times worse. Like it just don't make sense to me. Tro- troll you worse. How are they bullying you? No, no. I mean, some people try like I, so I posted one day, like doing features for $20, you know, I'm playing around and they yeah. like, bro, you better be sending me that 20, you know? And I had so many messages, like people like you better pay me. You better pay me. I had to take it down. And then people saved the screenshot and was sending it to me. Like, Bro, send my money so I can send you this feature. And I'm like, bro, they were spamming me for like weeks. Wow. I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> and then like, I think I had a, in one video, I had like, a, I had some sandals on and I think my foot was out. Mm. Some people were screenshotting and sending it to me like, bro, I'm going to sell your feet pics. I was, I don't know what they were doing, man. They was doing too much. People are threatening to sell your feet on the internet? Yeah, apparently. I try not to respond to it, but I think it's hilarious. So, you know, I got to say something. Are, are there are there some times where your your fans are kind of like low key scaring you a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. So like my video locations be getting leaked. And, oh, like, really? People will be sending it to me. Yeah. So that's kind of what I don't like. So, you know, that's why I film in just the most random locations because of that. Has has anybody done anything ridiculous as, as a result of sort of that information being out there? Yeah, I had a few videos of people like sending me videos of them waiting at that spot and they like, we're going to wait till we see you. And I'm like, that's crazy. But OK, yeah, that that's like the number one most guaranteed way to never see you. Yeah. So I was like, I just never go back to the locations. Like, right. Go somewhere else. Right. Exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> OK, so moving on from there, um, I wanted to. um ask you about you know uh your 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 poor grandma who you referenced earlier you know she she, she's she catches a lot of strays in your music honestly honestly you know it's is 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 there is there a reason for that is there a chance that maybe going forward we can go easier on grandma you know in, in in the new material or something just just sort of just ease up give her an easier time or something I feel like I did give her easier time recently because I really ain't been throwing shots at her okay like I'm I'm definitely coming back though you know because like she just been messing with me my whole life, man. It's like, I don't do nothing. She's bothering me. So I think she deserve all this. <laughs> so, so you've got to get back at her through the music. Yes, I have to. You okay. know, you can't physically like hit your grandma with a lamp, you know, like. Right, so or or a pumpkin. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I was thinking about that one. I was really thinking, but I was like, nah. Well, it, it is Halloween season. Yeah. So, it's, so it makes sense that you would be thinking about it. Yeah, so that's the only stray I threw at her, like, in most recent times. But I got, like, so many more songs of me just taking shots at her, you know? It, 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 ho- it, like I just said, Halloween did just happen. Did you go as anything? Did, did, you, did you have a costume sort of planned out or anything like that? Are you a big Halloween person? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So me and my, uh, my dad and my brother, we kind of stood outside by the garage and, like, dressed up as Michael Myers, Freddy, and then Jason. And then was, like, acting like statues and kind of scaring people. Okay. Wh- which, which one did you end up being? I was Michael Myers. Okay, okay. Do you have like a favorite, you know, are you a big horror movie fan generally? Not really. No, not really. If you ask me, I say scary movie, you know, too. Like, and that's not, that's not a horror movie, you know. No, it's a spoof movie though, which I mean, there, that, that is, I mean, obviously that speaks to your sense of humor, but, but, you know, it's also interesting because there's, there's not as many spoof movies generally as there used to be. It's kind of like an era that, that sort of came and went. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what, what do you what do you think about, like, kind of the current state of, I guess, humor in music generally? Like, usually it, it, it sort of seems like the, the moment that you're at least trying to be a little bit funny in 
anything that you do as far as music goes, you can't be taken seriously in any artistic way as you've kind of like experienced with people seeing what you do. Uh, yeah. You even sort of like throw shots at your own music while you're recording it as as well. Um, you know, are you being totally genuine when you do that sort of thing? Or is there something to your music in actuality that you actually do want people to kind of like take from it? How much of that is you just kind of playing around and how much of it is like, uh, you know, I mean, it, it, it sort of go into that a little bit. It sounds like it's like 80, 20, 80 percent playing around and 20 percent real. You know, I'll hmm. be trying to show people with my music that like we all can do it. You know, hmm. it's like because before you got the you got the big music, you know, that's on radios and stuff. And people act like you can't get there just by being yourself. And I'm like, you, you really can. So I just kind of do that with my music. But I still got to let them know it's trash, you know, like I can't just let that go unnoticed. I still got to let you know, like, this is garbage, man. Like, golly, you know, <laughs> Could could you see yourself in maybe this is the opposite of what you would ask most artists, but could you see yourself making worse music in the future? Of course, man. Like I'm always trying to get worse, you know, but like it's only because it's the holidays where I'm getting good, but I'm going back like. To, oh, OK. So, so wait, t- hold on. You've, you've been getting better, but only because of the holiday season. Yeah. Yeah. So like I got like these Christmas tapes I'll be dropping and stuff. And right. And they kind of go crazy during the holidays. So, like, the fans, they want me to make more. Okay. And every time I make them, I got to get a little bit good just so, like, you know, Mariah Carey got competition. But, like, I after was, that. It's, it's genius that you brought that up because I was actually going to ask you, you know, given the holiday stuff you come out with and you're going to be coming out with, do you fear any kind of lawsuit or retribution from Mariah Carey at some point because you're kind of, like, stepping in on her territory? You're take, Those are streams that could be going to all I want for Christmas, but you're taking them. And do you, you know, have you, have you got any sort of like cease and desist or anything like that? Any kind of shots or attacks or subliminals from Mariah Carey over that? Uh, as far as I know, no, you know, right. But it's probably, then, it's probably coming. Oh man. Hopefully not, you know, but if it do, then, you know, I might have to just make a, a, a diss or something on her, you know, you know, I, I think, I think if you sampled, you know, all I want for Christmas. And then you, th- you threw the shots over that, that'd probably get her attention. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I don't want, I, I don't do. want to, I don't want to get you in trouble though. I don't want to get you in trouble. Yeah. 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 You know, I got you. I'm gonna make sure like if I do it, I'm gonna just say it's all your idea. So I don't get in trouble. Okay. So, so just to be clear for the fans in chat who, you know, are, are, are hearing this, you're making this holiday stuff, you're getting better. You're really working on it. You're crafting it. But then as soon as that's out and we see January 2024, you're getting worse. It's just going oh, yeah, downhill yeah, yeah. from there. Yeah, complete dog crap. Yeah. <laughs> how, how do you feel, you know, like what's what's maybe the most obvious way that you feel like you could get worse from here? You know, like uh, are, so are you like, going to be rapping more off the beat, picking worse beats? Like wh- how, no, how no, far so does I'm it go? I'm thinking about like I'm going to definitely choose more beats and stuff. But like I'm going to start like rapping like I mean, I got to do an example because I don't know how to say it in the words you know mm. so i'm a rap and like and then and, 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 and then that's kind of like what i'm going for mm. okay all right uh it, you know any any other sort of like things that you feel like you're going to be trying and did you throw anything else out there before we go on to the next thing yeah yeah uh, i'm gonna be going uh throwing more shots at the wwe you okay know, i feel like i feel like i need to get that out there are you waiting for them to give you something, do something for you, for you to, to no, no, no. I just, let I just up feel on like them. doing it. Yeah. If they're, they're over here where, you know, I'm, I'm from on the East coast. If you ever need a place to be like a home base to operate from, to sort of be closer to them, to, you know, put the heat on them, just let me know. Okay. I got you. Okay. Um, you know, in, in your previous tracks, uh, you've, very much kind of set yourself up as like a champion of civil rights, Martin Luther King, Frederick Douglass, Malcolm X. Um, is is there anybody else to which, you know, maybe you haven't said it in song yet, uh, to which you would owe your success that you might want to shout out or thank in this interview, in this conversation? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Morgan Freeman. You got okay. Rosa Parks. Right. Uh, I forgot his name. It's just one more name, but I got like a few more in the vault, though. Okay. And and they may be getting sort of like more specific songs at some point in the future. Yep. I oh. even got a song about Abraham Lincoln too. Wow. Okay. 
And, and is that sort of, you know, as kind of clear cut and just as positive as your Martin Luther King track or yeah, you know, yeah, is, yeah, is yeah. it going to be more like nuanced, you know, sort of like in, ter- in terms of just sort of like going, going over h- him and his contributions and his presidency? Uh, so it's a little bit of all, you know, but I still got to keep it like, you know, you know, Miles way, you know. Got it. Got it. No, I understand. Um, also, you know, you're somebody who uh, uh, clearly loves to travel. Maybe has a bit of wanderlust. Hong Kong is, you know, a track that's very indicative of that. Uh, do you have any sort of like vacations planned coming up or any other places that you feel like you may go or want to tribute in a future song just to, you know, kind of continue to show fans that you are a worldly artist to sort of like, you know, has, has been places? Uh, yeah, yeah. I want to want to definitely take a trip to Paris and kind of make a song about that out there, you know, the Eiffel Tower. OK. Um, right now, I really can't think of too much more, honestly. Okay. All right. Um, you know, uh, also kind of specifically getting into another track, uh, Dookie on my shoe. Is that song narratively like from personal experience or, you know, was, was that sort of like what inspired that track or did you just like kind of come up with that concept on a whim? I, I stepped in some dog shit that day and I was on the way to the studio. So I just kind of put it in there. I have, you know, outside of maybe a moment where it was obvious because you were just being kind of funny or, or outlandish, have, have you ever lied in a song? Have you ever lied in a rap? Uh, no, I'm not going to say I'm not. No, nah, not really. No, you, you're you totally. Yeah, everything I say is real. Yeah. You try to be to- as truthful as possible in your rap music. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Except I mean... for the, let me, let me uh, clear up the crack line, though. My peoples are not on crack. So stop hitting me up. They not on crack. You know, okay. I just want to get that out there. Thank you for clearing that up. I mean, you know, you know how, again, how diehard your fans are. They're obsessed with everything that you're saying and doing, where you're shooting. That that could be, you have to be careful answering like that because they're they're now going to be looking at every line and they're going to be like, is is he telling the truth here? Is he telling the truth there? You, you, you know, they're, they're going to yeah, ride yeah. you for that if they catch you. Uh, yeah, I, I ain't say nothing, you know, so okay. they okay. can't say nothing. All right, good, 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 good to know. Um, you know, I, I, this, this is probably in poor taste, but you know, a, a track like road to riches, for example, I mean, it, it makes me want to ask like, um, and being true here, we were just talking about being true, like off of that track and in your catalog generally so far, how, how much money have you made off of this music? 10 million, 20 million, $30 million. That's probably lowballing it, but yeah, it's, it's like really lowballing it. It's like 45. Okay. That's like that's that's like more money than Logic. No, 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 no. He got more than that. He Logic more got like nine hundred million. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Do you think um? Do you think Drake recently announced retirement because he's afraid of his music not doing as many numbers as your music does currently? Uh, yeah, a little bit. I think he really is. Okay. But right now, it's a lot of competition, though. You know, for Drake, so. Is you he, gotta really keep moving. Is he one of the people who you mentioned earlier that sort of like followed you and unfollowed you? It's like, no, nah, I can't get can't get caught doing this. No, no, not Drake. No, I don't not even Drake. think he knows me. Okay, I I mean he might. That'd be crazy if you do. Okay, all right. Um, to, to sort of like you know go back to an earlier question that I feel like we didn't sort of you know fully get into. Um, you know you were talking about some of the earlier tracks that you had sort of made that sort of popped off. Um, you know where did you see a lot of this? attention start to bubble up at first like where do people really start to like comment on your stuff heavily and react to it in a really intense way was it more soundcloud was it more tiktok like wh- wh- where where was that attention coming from at first uh so it actually came from my instagram first oh, okay so like uh around that time i was doing uh post on instagram how i'm doing now but instead i used to like you know get promos for meme pages mm. and it's like 10 books you know for like three pages with 100k and what I do is I spam that same meme template or that page for like a week straight just off of $10. Mm. And then like eventually they start like picking up people follow me from there. That's actually kind of a bit of an ingenious plan. Yeah. I'm about to say, I got a whole little story. I got a video on uh, how to, you know, do the, you know, miles like um, coming out soon. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, correct me on this because I'm not entirely sure on kind of the, uh, the, the the order of all this, but there's a lot of discussion and posts from you and your fans about you performing live. Now, you you playing live is this something that you're just about to do, or you just did, or 
It's uh, actually something I'm about to do. The something you're about to do. Is, uh, yeah, first concert is actually next month on the 16th. Okay, okay. So that, that's what I thought. So it's coming up. So like, what kind of plans do you have in place for this show? Have you been sort of like, you know, devising something kind of big for the performance here? Like, what's going to be the You Know Miles experience in person? Uh, well, I really don't want to give it up because it's actually kind of a few things, but I'm just to let everybody know, like, beforehand, somebody brought to my attention that, you know, like, I'm like a comedy rapper, so I took that into my own hands, and my show is going to be literally comedy rap. Mm. So don't think I'm going to go up there doing stand-up. That's not exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> just know, like, imagine watching a Looney Tunes cartoon, and you remember all the crazy stuff that used to happen in there, just, just kind of think of something like that. That's going to be my concept. Okay. And do you feel like this is going to be sort of a test run for you to maybe do more live performances in the future? Yeah. Yeah. This is a test run. Yes. Is like a national tour sort of like, you know, something that it's actually you... in a, it's in the talks right now, actually. Oh, okay. Okay. So, you know, a wider tour is definitely something that you want to try to shoot for. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Do you have anything else that you kind of like, maybe you want to give the fans, bit of a taste or an update on in terms of like what else you might have planned for them, you know, like a, like a tour or something like that. Is there anything else that you could sort of like tell them that they could be looking forward to? Is it a new tape? Is it a new project? Is it a new set of tracks about this or that or another thing? Uh, yeah, yeah. So I got a, like I was just kind of saying, I'm dropping a Thanksgiving song coming up. So, you know, get y'all turkeys ready, you know, and, Let's go crazy on that. And the Christmas EP is dropping a week later after the Thanksgiving song. Hmm. You know, I, I, I want to ask not to get like too pretentious with this or anything, but like, does the term outsider music mean anything to you? No, I don't even know what that is, man. No, it's totally fine. It's totally fair. Uh, do you see yourself as being inspired? And, and maybe this is a no, because you say that, you know, you were listening to hip hop more recently generally, but, um, you know, would you say at all you're inspired on some level by artists like, let's say, Lil B, for example? Yeah, yeah, I used to bang Lil B, actually. Him, okay. IJJ Fish, uh, Soldier Boy in his, like, 20, uh, 2011 to, like, 14 era. I used okay. to play him, too. Okay. And, I mean, you know, as far as, like, hip-hop music that you may have been listening to around that time... Uh, was that a majority of the stuff that you would listen to? Were there other artists that maybe you preferred to them? Is there something about their music that drew you more to that? Uh, I like their music. Just, you know, like it's uh, to me, it was entertaining. So mm. I kind of like that. But no, I used to listen to uh, this one group called like Sicko Mob a lot when I was younger, around like 24. Sorry, what was sorry? What it glitched? What was the name of the group again? It's called uh, Sicko Mob. They okay. were like from Chicago. Okay. I used to listen to them a lot. And then it was a rapper like Maddie Baby. I used to listen to him too. Mm. And, you know, as far as um, we, we, we asked about, you know, you sort of like making worse music and doing stuff to sort of like sound worse. Like, how, how, what, what do you feel like you would be doing on a track or could you ever see yourself 100 percent seriously trying to make like the best, most meaningful song of your life? Is that something that even interests you as an idea or you just don't even care? Uh, I don't I mean, I could do it. It's, it's like super easy to me. Um. Oh. Not, yeah, like I got a lot of real songs, but I just know I can't be a serious person. Like, if you ask anybody around me, I just can't be serious for too long. Like, I can probably drop a real song. Five minutes later, I'm like, all right, bro, we're done with that. Do Do you feel like, well, if 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 you were to do such a thing hypothetically, would you see yourself still dropping it as you know Miles, or maybe sort of like doing something else and and maybe putting it out under another name to sort of like keep it separate? Yeah, I'm thinking uh, if I ever do it, I'll just probably drop through a different name, honestly. Okay, okay. Do, do you see yourself always kind of sticking with this character as you create going forward? Or, you know, uh, be, it with a no, no. be it with a serious song or something else, could you see yourself kind of changing into something else in the future? Uh, I actually see myself right now. I'm trying to work on doing like three different personas actually at one time. So oh. I'm kind of incorporating two more after uh, this interview, actually. <laughs> Right at immediately as this interview yeah, is yeah, done. Yeah, yeah, immediately. I would say I can press the button right now, but I'm going to wait, you know. <laughs> okay. Can you give us, maybe not literally embodying them right now, but like what is kind of the character makeup of one of these new personas? Like what other kind of personas or characters are you going to expose us to? What's the, what's, what's the deal with at least one of them? 
Uh, so at least one. I'm working on one right now. I'm trying to promote it. His name like Money Miles, you know. Okay. And it's like I got the idea from uh, old MTV cribs, you know, like inter uh, interview. I guess used to say when they open the door, you know, like walk from the MTV cribs. You know, he's like, "This is my house" and all this stuff. And I just like, bro, I gotta do something else now. And that's kind of was it on there. So I'm gonna just kind of announce it and then like figure out as I go. It's kind of the same way I did this. And is this character going to? look different is this gonna character embody music too or is it just gonna be like for a funny video or uh i'm trying to do it all on this character but okay. then like you know i might kind of do it on the next character i'm gonna have music on this one but it's not gonna be the same music i'm doing now okay okay all right so new music new characters new personas being embodied uh, new everything you're you're just like you're creating it a mile a minute and you just have multiple different sort of voices screaming inside of you to get out i mean the way you put it that's crazy but uh yeah <laughs> the, i mean the way i put it yes it does sound a little crazy but i mean i i, th I think you're somebody who's embracing insanity at least a little bit to a degree no i mean anything could be insanity you know so like i guess not really it's kind of all normal really I mean, you know, on sort of like a personal individual level, like, you know, if, if I'm, if I just sort of met you on the street and, you know, and you weren't in character, you weren't, you know, you, you weren't, you know, miles or anything like that. Um, you know, and, and we sort of talked for a little bit and we weren't talking about this per se, you know, we were just talking about everyday stuff or just stuff that we're going through or, you know, whatever's around us at the time, you know, would, would I get the impression that you're just sort of like this crazy wild guy that has all this like shit going on or, you know, no, or, or, or do you feel like you act this way once you put the mask on and you can be sort of whatever you want to be as, you know, miles. Uh, so like, I mean, without the mask, you know, like everybody tell you I'm like a funny dude. That's okay. kind of really it. Other than that, not really. Everybody just like, dang, he chill. Like he chills. And then all he do is like, you know, make people laugh. And that's kind of it. But you know, I'll be doing a lot of stuff too. Also like, without the mask mm -hmm. but once you're in character you hop on the mic and you're like <laughs> like yeah 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 turn that up you know what I'm right saying? and that and, and when you're just kind of being yourself that's not that's not something that pops up well actually it, it comes from actually being myself but i just like took it up with not you know okay i got it so this allows you to sort of indulge in it in just the strongest most intense way yeah yeah okay got it got it got it um you know, so pe people are really asking or people are sort of mentioning a few different things here. This is maybe an apt comment. Stan Lee created over 50 superheroes. I want more character based music. TBH seems like it will be more common in the future. I mean, in that sense, do you see any sort of like parallels between like what you do and maybe like MF Doom, for example? Uh, yeah, yeah, a little bit. I'm trying to like create a universe too. you know, you know, cinematic universe. I okay. feel like that'd be crazy. Okay. And and there are a lot of people talking about and referencing the, the Benjamin button. Like is, is is that something that you want to kind of like give any insight to for, for the hardcore fans of, of, of that? Yeah, that's all the banger, man. That's all right. hard. Uh <laughs> really I had seen a movie, you know, like a lot of people didn't even know Benjamin Button until literally like after i dropped the song there's asking right. them, like you're you're doing the age backwards you know it's like, it's, it's not a widely referenced track in a lot of rap music so you, you're kind of, you're kind of becoming like a gateway you're you're introducing fans to that that's fire yeah so actually the good thing the bad thing about it is before i actually dropped the video that song was out nine months beforehand right and but people like, just like people caught up them. People call yeah, yeah. When I later. first dropped it, they was like, "Bro, this is trash. Like, this is trash." You know, so I had to let them know, like, it's not trash. It's really good. Mm -hmm. So this this that is a song. Fun. This is a song that you'd say you're actually like proud of. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. It's one of my favorite ones. Um, you know, just to sort of like a fan, just straight up, like, what's your favorite SpongeBob episode? It's the Krusty Krab pizza, bro. It's, it's like I think that's everybody. Hmm. The singing in it, the pizza delivery, the yeah, dynamic yeah. between him and Squidward. There's a lot of funny parts of it. Yeah, I used to deliver pizzas, man, back in like like a year ago before, you know, like picked up and stuff. So I really related to that a lot. Did you actually like have any sort of um, uh, connection directly to a single pizza place or was it like a DoorDash thing? 
No, no, it was a happy fee. Yeah. Okay. Cool. They paid terrible, six dollars an hour, man, or a delivery. My bad. Are you doing anything currently outside of you know the music world to sort of make ends meet, or are you able to just like kind of focus mostly just on your art and, and get by? Uh, I wouldn't really say that. I'm not really like kind of pressed for, you know, the money matters right now, but mm -hmm. I, I do like a lot of stuff on the other side though. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I kind of like 50, 50 both. Okay. Fair. Valid. Um, listen, I appreciate you taking the time uh, before you head out. Is there anything else that you want to sort of like leave us with, uh, you know, to look forward to, or just sort of like, no, uh, before you peace out? No, nah, I think that's it, man. Okay. That's it. Well, I, I appreciate you being an open book. And doing this interview and just uh sharing with us uh everything that you're willing to and and just give us a bit of a a peek and an insight into the uh why you know uh, not why you know you know miles uh <laughs> cinematic universe i appreciate that all right thanks man thanks for giving me the chance for my first interview all right thank you very much man all righty thanks all right have a good one